Hey folks, welcome to History of Cars slash History of Car Options. <sighs> Today's the final episode of Toyota Motor. So it's going to be long, but not too long. It's going to be V8s, V10s, V12s. We also going to be talking about cars, particular cars that those cars, those motors come in, because they only come in like two of them only come in to two cars, two motors for two cars, and then there's some motors that come in a whole series of cars, but most of these are going to be on the high end spectrum of the car collection. So, here we go. Let's. We're going to get back into it. Okay. Yes, this one is actually kind of longer than usual because it's not just one and two pages, it's actually two and a half pages. And the third page ain't completely done, but. I'm going to pull up some paper, some things here while I talk. Okay? Normally I'd be doing this on Saturday morning, but I'm doing it today on a Friday to record and uploading it on Saturday. That way I can get it done, get it over with, because I'm going to try to see if I can get something else done. On Saturday, I've not been uploading. But, let's start off. Okay, where did we... Last time we spoke, we we ended on... The, with Toyota Motors, we ended up with the inline 6 and the... We're going to go on into the B, BX, BZ series. Which is actually a V6. They have a crap ton of V6s, so let's go through. They actually started in '87, and ran they and that one and they started with the one VZ, which ran from '87 to '93, or the VZ one as they called it. The two VZ. And that was actually a 2 liter. The 2BZ was a 2.5 liter. Same basic things. I will go into detail on how you get, like, for example, how you get a 350 and a 305 out of the same block. I'll explain that all later. This is the same principle for them in all their cars. The, like, the the 1R through the 22R motors. Same block, basically. Some some little minor changes, but same block, just different things to get the di different little difference in displacement. <sighs> then the 3, and it... They also had the 3 liter 3BZ. That during that time, but it ended in 1997, and then they had the four, which started in '93, when the others were starting to end with the 2.5 liter mm -hmm. B B Z again, and and that one ended in '98. But then in 95, they ran a 3.4, mm -hmm. and they kept that 3.4 going until 2000 and what? I have it written down. 2004. Then in 94, they actually started another, another series called the MZ. V6 series, 
which had a 3 liter, a 2.5, and a 3.3. In 2002, they actually started the GR series, which most people know of the GR series. <laughs> yeah, sorry about this. Mm. Uh, sometimes I have to just, I'm having to clear up some things and put things on Do Not Disturb. <coughs> the GR series. Uh, the one GR was produced from 2002 and it was a 4 liter. The two thousand, the two GR was starting to be produced in two thousand six, which was a three point five, and then the three GR that ran from two thousand three through two thousand ten, good series of V six motors, but not my favorite. I'm not really into the V6s from Toyota, to be honest. They had decent motors for the Camry and stuff like that, but they mostly are sideways V6s. If I wanted a sideways V6, I would have to go to a Chevrolet sideways V6, like the 3.1, the 3.8, because those are good motors. Reliable. Trust me, very reliable. Easily supercharged or easily turbocharged. I mean, good buildable motors. The blocks are basically a sick, a shortened V8 with a few added extras, just like the 4.3 V6. So, yeah. I have a few things I do think about. And yeah, I know that's a whole different subject. But that was a digress into the B6 series of life. Because <laughs> that's why we're in a lot. Uh, <laughs> the pool, okay, I'm going to just list it off. The Ford GR was a 2.5, ran from 2003 to 2015. The 5, because most of the GR series were one year only specials, so yeah. The 6 GR was a 4 liter that ran for 2013 only. The 7 GR was a 3.5 liter that ran in 2015 only. The 8 GR was a was the last of them and it was ran from 2017 through 2018 and it was a 3.5 nice nice displacement but still not my favorite type <sighs> then they hmm yeah, that is the GRs. Then, they did a non-production run of the H8909 motor. It only ran, then, they, in 2017, let me see if that's where my, yeah, they actually ran one more V6 in 2017, which was a 3.4 liter called the V35A. I never really got, I don't, I didn't mess with too much of these motors when I was a mechanic and automotive, in the automotive world. I'm coming, I'm not even in the, that field anymore. I barely, I don't get to see that many motors because I don't walk on cars like that anymore. 
And two, that's too new for me to work on. I don't like them. I like old salt. <laughs> I'm big old salt. <sighs> that was the end of the resets collection. Kind of quick, kind of easily done, but that was the first page. Our next page is going to be talking about the V8s, which some of these V8s in the early days only came in the century limos. Which that comes into that that actual talking of that call comes back for a second round later in this in this episode. So remember, century. Toyota Century Limo. Just remember that, folks. The V8 collection started off in the early 60s. They had some non production cars, motors, and then they had some production motors. Then they had production motors that was not for public production but for private production for racing so that's all in this session <laughs> okay okay and it's the beast and they are actually called the visas of motor and they ran from 63 to 98 that's the longest V6 collection you can get. Other than the, um, what was it? 3.8. V8, the 3.8 was the longest run production I know of a V6 from America. But I'm not for sure, but that's the longest one I liked. Because it ran until the... <laughs> Mid many mid two thousands in some cars, but that's until they quit producing that car, that line of cars. Anyway, <laughs> which I'll tell you that's history in another episode. I may. How about this, folks? I give you a. break down of this. In this area, we're going to break down the V8s. We're going to talk about, like, especially for 89. 1989 was a special V8 because it was built strictly for one thing. And I love it. I want mine own in one. And yes, this one, this motor actually... One of these motors has over almost 1.5 million miles here in the United States on it. So, I'm taking a pause. I took a pause. It will not look like it, but I did. Okay. Since it's the 63 through 67... Was a 2.6 liter V8. Small, literally, most of these V8s are kind of small for Toyota in the early days. Um, the 67 through 73 was a 3 liter. 73 through 83 was a 3.4 liter. And the 83 through the 98 was a 4 liter. They got kind of big. And then, if you take in, they didn't mass produce the R series of motor, which I only produced from 88 to 89, V8, and so it wasn't really too much of an important motor. But that leads into the most important V8 in their collection. Which is your Lexus style V8, the UZ. The UZ V8, it is the, one of the most important Toyota V8s produced. 
it was one of the most balanced and cost one of the most costly V8s ever produced in the Japanese market. Actually, I think Toyota's the only one in the Japanese market that actually produced a V8. <laughs> but most of your early V8s, the 63 through 83, were all in limos, namely the Toyota Century limo. The one UZ motor was the four liter that was put in the Lexus, um, what was it? LS 400, very first Lexus ever produced. And with my watching of YouTube, of course, and my love of cars, and long and things. This is a million mile, 1.5 million mile Lexus. This motor, this particular motor here, is ran all the way up in most of their, I think for the most part, it was ran in most of their Lexuses up until the early, when did this one, these end? Until the early ten, until about 2010. So you're gonna find them in SUVs like the V8 um, Lexus GX 400 and 600. Same thing, but it was also put in the Toyota Land Cruiser, the big boy um, Land Cruiser. Like, actually, for example, it was actually in, um, I'm trying to think. This was the same Land Cruiser that they put in a movie. I trying, can't think of the movie right now, but I digress again. And the two, that's the 2UZ for that. And it was... A 4.7 liter. The one point... One UZ was ran from 89 to 2002. So they had a nice little run. And it was a very, very important. Yes, I'm. you, you heard the creaking of what I said. Because I don't actually have an official chair yet. But I don't have the room for the chair yet either. Mm -hmm. The 2UZ ran from 98 to 2009, and the 3UZ, it was a 4.3 liter that ran from, what, 2000, what was it? No, 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 no. Yeah, from 2000 to 2010. Wow. Ten years, but these are all the V8s you can find in like your Land Cruisers and stuff. It's one, the UZ, two UZ, three UZ. They are lo located in Land Cruisers and Lexuses. That's basically most of your V8 Lexuses are in the early 2000s, 2000 to 2010. Most of those V8s were three UZs. But this was the, one of the more important built motors because of how they were designed. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about a, a series of motors that ran from like, what was it? Let me see. From 96 to 2014. Not as big of a length. Not quite 20 years, but what they did was these were all non-production, production-built motors. Production for racing, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite um, areas. 
they ran the Indy call. The okay, it was from the IOL Indy Cars Cart Racing to Roland Nip and to Super GT and even the Le Mans prototype race cars. Some of them were hooked up with um, being a hybrid. Some were nicely aspirated. Some were turbocharged. Some were supercharged. So they had a variation. And the sizes started off at 2.65 and ended at 3.7. So they were literally no bigger than my deck. Literally no bigger than two thirds of my desk. That I said that. And they were all do overhead cams, like some you, some you, I did not talk about because most of your Toyotas were do overhead cam or single overhead cam, but some of your some of the early V8s were like overhead valved only. But in two they, in two thousand six for the public use, they did put out one more motor series, which was the for all the UR series, actually. Sorry, because my usual like falls. <laughs> the one you all ran from 2006 till last year <laughs> for that. And that was the 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8. Naturally aspirated. But in 2007 they did one year and one year run of a 5.0 and nicely aspirated 5 liter V8 um for that it only ran for one car so and I don't remember exactly what car it was it actually wasn't even a car it was an SUV and then they, they, and that was a two UV, you all. But back in 2000, then in 2007, they put out the three you all and ran it until 2022. So they, we get into more newer stuff. Some of it I don't like, some of it I do. But that's, that's my purpose, me being a mechanic. I may not like the newer stuff because it's more electronics and I'm more old school, <laughs> like 1970s and 1980s, non-computer control carbureted style motors. Now, this one, I will say, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you some information. The motor is one of the most beautiful sounding V10s and they had a acoustic specialist help design and, te and they teamed up with one of the most craziest bike companies to produce this V10 for one particular car that ran from December of 2010 to December of 2012 with a limited production number of cars called the LFA, the Lexus LFA. One, my, because I'm part of a car clan for Verizon, Forza Horizon 5, and my clan leader, my car clan leader, and another YouTuber called Stevio, this is his dream car. The Lexus LFA is a V10. Now we got one last motor to really worry about. This is the biggest, far as cylinder wise, motor. And you've heard, I brought it up like three times, two times already. This is going to be your third time. Toyota's only limo the Toyota Century limo 
It has a V12. Now it's time to bring up my paperwork that I was going, I should have done, been doing earlier, but I didn't. Because I will go back to doing Toyotas, but this is the last of the Toyota gasoline collection. They still got diesels to do. I still can do diesels. And yes, I do like diesels. Because, <sighs> yeah, I know I didn't talk about the RV10 and RVX. I talked about the LR. Which the LR was a 4.8 liter V10. Now we're going to talk. The GZ is a dual overhead cammed 5 liter V12. It only gave me one car, and it was a Toyota Century, and that ran from 1997 to 2017. I'd love to get a hold of one because I want to take that V12. Do something that nobody else has done yet. Yes, the car's already rear-wheel drive, but I want to do something even bad and crazier. I want to build it all-wheel drive, and I want to take an turbo that beat 12 and take out all that extra weight and see what it really could do. Or slam that B12 into, hmm, say...